Our story starts with a butterfly that used to be common around the Bay Area. It has beautiful orange, black, and white wings, but it's small with a wingspan of only two inches. You might not even notice it if it flew into your garden, and these days it's almost gone. But it's far from forgotten. This creature, the Bay Checkerspot Butterfly, has become a key player in conservation south of San Francisco Bay. Land purchases made to protect the butterfly in the Diablo Range have aided efforts to restore a wildlife corridor in Coyote Valley. And that has brightened hopes for the survival of wide-ranging species like badgers and mountain lions in the Santa Cruz Mountains. It's a classic story of the butterfly effect in which a flap of wings from a small creature can influence events in the larger world. But in this particular version of the story, the butterfly got help from endangered species laws, a tenacious biologist, and an audacious agency, the Santa Clara Valley Open Space Authority. In March 2022, a delegation from Save Mount Diablo traveled down to San Jose to chat with some of the people who made it all happen. They turned one of the largest cities in the United States away from dreams of developing this into the next annex of Silicon Valley and instead protecting the most important connection between the Diablo Range and the Santa Cruz Mountains. Yep. It was yeah. like a massive defensive effort for decades to keep it from getting developed. And then finally, the forces all converged for good. Independent biologist Stuart Weiss came to the Diablo Range in 1984 to check out Coyote Ridge. He knew its serpentine soils would make it good habitat for a butterfly he's been studying with Stanford professor Paul Ehrlich. I had just graduated from Stanford with my bachelor's degree and we came down here and we discovered the mother load of bay checker spot butterflies on the mother load of serpentine outcrops. And I'd been in a lab that had been studying the checker spot for decades. And it was like, oh, this is the place. We can finally do all the science. And it's been a scientific gold mine. The bay checker spot was listed as a threatened species in 1987. Habitat lost to sprawl was one reason for its decline. But Weiss's studies reveal two other culprits. First, nitrogen pollution from tailpipes and smokestacks was fertilizing non-native grasses, which can smother the native plants the butterfly needs. The second problem was a reduction in cattle grazing. Taking cattle off the land also boosts the growth of those non-native grasses. If you didn't have cows out here, we'd be standing in a sea of Italian ryegrass. The system has changed so much with the non-native grasses and the nitrogen deposition that the only solution we have at a landscape scale is to have the cows eat the grass. In a landmark article in 1999, Weiss published data showing how cars, cows, and butterflies were intertwined. He also decided that doing science was not enough. He needed to become as he called it, a rabble-rousing conservationist. So back in 2000, a couple of us sitting across the table going, well, somebody should do something. And of course, we look at each other and go, yeah, that's us. So we started bringing people up here to see the wildflowers in the spring. So we got county supervisors, we got city council members. We called it Operation Flower Power bring the power up to the flowers. And people were just absolutely blown away because it looks like nothing from down on Highway 101. When a gas-fired power plant was proposed in South San Jose, the Endangered Species Act came to the rescue. Weiss's nitrogen studies convinced the authorities that more land needed to be set aside for conservation. Then that just snowballed. More power plant projects. They're widening Highway 101 from two lanes in each direction to four lanes in each direction. 
The biological opinion said you have to enter into a habitat conservation plan. That's the only way we know how to deal with the regional growth. So 2013, we had a habitat conservation plan. And that was based largely on the increased nitrogen emissions from increased traffic is having a disproportionate impact up here. And you gotta mitigate for it. The Habitat Plan unlocks state and federal funding for conservation. Private foundations made major investments too, as did the City of San Jose and Peninsula Open Space Trust. De Anza Community College students were collecting data Groups like Green Foothills were working hard to stall development proposals, and the Santa Clara Valley Open Space Authority stepped in to create a conservation vision for the entire region. At age 30, the Open Space Authority is considered a new kid among Bay Area land preservation agencies, but it's been making a big difference. When its current leader, Andrea McKinsey, arrived in 2011, the Open Space Authority had 14,000 acres of natural and working lands to manage. A decade later, it has almost 30,000 acres, including Mayan Oyakma, Coyote Ridge Open Space Preserve. And that's where we're headed today, a soon-to-be-opened preserve with a Chochenyo name to honor the indigenous people who have lived near here for thousands of years. It's a gateway to the Diablo Range, home to elk, eagles, badgers, mountain lions, and of course, the bay checker spot butterfly. The first stop on our tour is the land that will become a staging area for the preserve. It's close to the freeway, and not much to look at when we visit, but it has a fun story. And while we were negotiating and trying to protect the ridge, all of a sudden, out comes this listing for this 20-acre site, and the county said, oh, we're too busy to look at it. And for a couple hundred thousand dollars, we snapped it up. We, we bought the parking lot before the park. That was a good move, because the Open Space Authority secured the millions that it needed, and the staging area and the rest of the 1,831-acre preserve will be open to the public sometime in 2023. Visitors who come in the spring should see stunning splashes of iconic California wildflowers, even a few endemic ones which grow nowhere else on the planet. We're greeted first by yellow wallflowers and later by fragrant fritillaries. This is a rare species. It's, it's a beautiful little native lily, Fritillaria liliacea, and very patchy. So there's like 10,000 plants in this area here. There's another patch that has like two or three thousand. It's very, very particular in its habitat preferences. The primary host plant for the larvae of the bait checker spot is here too. It's Plantago erecta, or dwarf plantain. Later in the butterfly stage, checker spots sip nectar from gold fields and other wildflowers. These plants are partial to the area's serpentine soils because their chemistry discourages competition from non-native grasses. So every year we come out and we do a Bay Checker Spot Butterfly Survey where we count caterpillars. Or as we say, looking for larvae. So I come up with a population estimate every year across almost the entire range of the Bay Checker Spot Butterfly. We see only a few butterflies on our tour, but Weiss says they're doing well elsewhere on the ridge. We've had boom years where we'd be standing out here and you'd just be seeing bait checker spots flying all over the place. And uh, this year, they're down by a factor of about 100 from a couple of years ago, but that's what insect populations do. Seth Adams puts Weiss on the spot. Does he see himself as the grandfather of bait checker spot conservation? The bay checker spot is my muse, science and conservation muse. It's everything I ever learned about science and conservation, truly learned it, came out of the work I did with the butterfly. Okay, so what is Coyote Ridge to you? Center of the universe. <laughs> One of my favorite perspectives from Coyote Ridge Open Space Preserve 
is looking west across the Coyote Valley to the foothills of the Santa Cruz Mountains to the highest point in the Santa Cruz Mountains. And then you turn your gaze a little bit to the north, you can see San Jose, a population of a million people. You turn around and you face east and you see nothing but wild lands. It kind of feels like you're looking back in time. And you realize just what a priceless gem this landscape is. From Maya no Yakma, Coyote Ridge Open Space Preserve, we look down on the northern part of Coyote Valley. It's a small part of the Open Space Authority's namesake, Santa Clara Valley. The big green field right there, that's where tandem computers in the 80s wanted to develop. Then Coyote Valley Research Park, which was going to be Cisco's world headquarters, managed to fight all of those off. And then the really big proposal was a city the size of Mountain View down in Coyote Valley in the mid-2000s. They put out their draft EIR and we buried it under like a thousand pages of substantive comments. So they said, oh, okay, I think we're going to go back and redo it. Then the economy collapsed. And then like all the momentum built to conserve it instead of develop it. Coyote Valley is one of the last remaining undeveloped valley floors in the San Francisco Bay Area. It's where the Diablo Range and the Santa Cruz Mountains come closest together. But development has increasingly isolated species in the two ranges with worrisome results. Some of the estimated 60 mountain lions left in the Santa Cruz Mountains are already showing signs of inbreeding in the form of kinked tails. Strong connections between the two ranges could keep the population healthier. And wildlife of all kinds would have more options in times of drought and fire. They could move around and find safe, suitable habitats. That makes Coyote Valley a key puzzle piece on the California conservation map. This was identified by California Department of Fish and Wildlife years ago as one of the best opportunities to connect those two mountain ranges. Together, the two ranges could provide more than four million acres of wildlife habitat, an area almost twice the size of Yellowstone National Park. We realized that that narrowest point there, that big meadow in Coyote Valley, it is the wildlife highway right there. Mountain ranges are so close here, they can almost kiss. Imagine you're a bobcat or a coyote heading down from the Diablo Range to the Santa Cruz Mountains. First, you have to cross all the lanes of Highway 101. You might decide to crawl through a culvert or some other sort of undercrossing instead. Then you wend your way through a maze of lands in the valley until you get to Monterey Road. It has two lanes in each direction and a four-foot concrete barrier with a two-foot chain-link fence on top. That wall makes Monterey Road even deadlier for wildlife than Highway 101. Our work is to dramatically improve the situation through constructing many other culverts that are designed specifically for wildlife. And then we're also in the early stages of feasibility studies for a new dedicated wildlife bridge that would go over Monterey Highway and the future alignment of high-speed rail. Near the end of our tour, we've crossed both highways and are heading north towards suburbia. But there's one stop left, a pullout at North Coyote Valley Conservation Area. Within it is a seasonal wetland called Laguna Seca, or Dry Lake. Once 10 times larger than today, Laguna Seca is still the largest undeveloped freshwater wetland in the Bay Area. There's a gate at the entrance with a bobcat silhouette, but we can't go in just yet. First, the Open Space Authority and its partners want to undo decades of dredging, damming, and channelizing. It's one more example of the butterfly effect. Conservationists who started out saving the Bay Checker Spot have ended up embracing a much bigger conservation goal. We've got tons of birds migrating on the Pacific Flyway coming through here, all kinds of wildlife. The studies we just kicked off is to restore this whole area 
for wildlife connectivity and for watershed restoration. We're putting Humpty Dumpty back together again <laughs> here in Coyote Valley. We really are. This is audacious that people are saying we're going to defy the pressure of Silicon Valley and we're going to put back this connection together between the two mountain ranges. Timing is everything. It's in 2017, the biggest floods to hit downtown San Jose in 100 years hit on Coyote Creek. That allowed us to piggyback on that story and on climate change and on the wildfires that came from both the Santa Cruz side and the Diablo side and just to say, hey people, the time is now. Adams looks at these plans with more than admiration. His organization, 50-year-old Save Mount Diablo, is expanding its geographic area from Mount Diablo down the 200-mile-long Diablo Range. We're expanding to the seven northern counties of the Diablo Range, including Santa Clara and San Benito south of here. And so the connectivity that's exciting to me is between our organization and this agency and what that's going to mean in the coming decades. When I came to the Open Space Authority, I didn't imagine there would be a meeting where Save Mount Diablo would be with the Open Space Authority talking about how to scale up and be looking at landscape conservation over 100 or 200 miles. So thank you, sir, for your audacious vision. We will come back in 20 or 30 years and hundreds of thousands of acres of the Diablo Range will have been protected in the meantime. And we won't be at 24% protection in the Diablo Range. We'll be closer to 50% or 60% or 75% like we are around Mount Diablo. When somebody comes back here 30 years from now, what's it gonna be like? Now this will be a restored wetlands. There'll be overlooks for the public to do environmental programs. Um, and the bobcats will be real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They are real around here, actually. <laughs>